Hi, and welcome to our QA Technology Talks. This is Series 4, uh, a small sliver of the DevOps pie. My name is Matt Anger, and I'll be hosting this um, QA Tech Talk today. We'll be focused specifically on how HP Agile Manager integrates with ALM. It's March 30th, 2016. Our agenda for today is a quick introduction, and I'll also be speaking about what Agile Manager is and what it is not. And then we'll go into the DevOps technology matrix, and we'll speak a bit about continuous testing and integration, and then we'll get direct into our demo, showing how application lifecycle management integrates with Agile Manager. So results positive. We were founded in 2004. We're a platinum HP partner focused on improving business execution. We've pioneered the rapid start implementation approach for tools like HP Quality Center, ALM, Performance Center, UFT Agile Manager. We've also been recognized by the world's largest technology companies as a leader in delivering better business results for our customers. We are an HP ASMPS support provider. We have a center of excellence devoted specifically to helping uh, customers across the world with their tools and QA managed services needs. We've been HP Partner of the Year many years in a row. Uh, we have a myriad of different other awards as well. Um, and some of our noted, notable customers in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see some of these brand names are well known across the world. We work very closely with some world-class companies to help them in a variety of ways. So what is HP Agile Manager? So some of the key capabilities, it's an agile project management tool. It's been around for a few years now. If you're a QA or test manager watching this QA Tech Talk, you're probably well aware of Quality Center or ALM. Agile Manager was introduced by HP, HP a few years back <clears throat> to address the market need around an agile project management tool. You know, some of the competitors, um, such as perhaps version one, uh, Jira or Axosoft, um, have been in the market for a while as well. And one of the key capabilities of Agile Manager is that it really helps your organization to uh, refine your backlog and to also integrate your information or your user stories, aka requirements in Agile Manager with Application Lifecycle Management or Quality Center. Even more is that Agile Manager provides a defect management function which enables your team to track defects as well and also synchronize those with Application Lifecycle Management. Another capability of the tool is is the development tool integration. So basically you have the ability to install an add-on that helps your developers integrate their IDEs directly with Agile Manager. So your developers could be using Eclipse, IntelliJ, or Visual Studio for that matter. Basically they install this add-on available for free from HP Live Network. That add-on enables them to enter tasks within a user story, comment on defects, reassign defects, reassign tasks, things of that nature. <clears throat> really prevents your developers from having to log in to HP Agile Manager and allows them to really focus on what they do best and within their native environment, within their IDE. The, the product also comes with some extensive team and resource management features in the form of a task board and also a planning board. <clears throat> we understand that, you know, True Agile practitioners often say that co-location is the best method to delivering, especially in a scrum sense. Um, you know, but we're realists as well. We understand that sometimes co-location um, is, just, is just not possible. And you have teams that are decentralized across the United States and perhaps even across the world. So HP, of course, has thought about that and they've developed a really intuitive and easy to use sort of virtual planning board that your scrum masters and product owners can use to reassign tasks and change statuses and things of that nature. <clears throat> Another key capability is the API functionality built into the tool. So you can integrate Agile Manager with some third-party products through the REST API. You can also use the API to develop some custom reporting too if necessary. So if the out-of-the-box reports don't suffice to your needs, you can always leverage the API to pull data from Agile Manager and spin up your own reports. Other key characteristics of Agile Manager are that it can be either SaaS, SaaS, software as a service, or on-demand, or it could be on-premise. 
So if you work within a highly regulated industry, uh, perhaps within the Department of Defense or within the banking industry where, you know, you're not comfortable with cloud-based software, software as a service, you can always get a bundled version of Agile Manager and install it within your data center, otherwise known as on-premise. Um, also, another thing to keep in mind is Agile Manager not only synchronizes or integrates with Application Lifecycle Management and Quality Center, but it also integrates with PPM, Project and Portfolio Management. Um, PPM has been around for a very long time as well, and HP has developed out some adapters so that Agile Manager can tie into PPM. It can trade metrics, um, it, it can send metrics data up to PPM, it can also send up information as it, as it relates to your sprints and your user stories. That information also can feed up into PPM. <clears throat> Another thing too is since you know, Agile Manager is um, a modern, clean, and intuitive UI built by a Scrum team at HPE. Um, the premise and the belief around the software is really driven by user feedback. So the feedback loop is in place for you to um, make enhancement requests, make suggestions on how to improve the product, and you see that over the course of time that the product is evolving at a rapid pace, and it's, it's, it's getting better and better with every release that HP pushes out there. So um, over time, you can see new features being added to the product, um, you know, things to make your job easier. That's really the goal. <clears throat> so what do we have here? So this is the DevOps technology matrix. And you see a few swim lanes across the left here, solutions, third parties, process, and HPE. Across the top, notice the common denominator, continuous. Continuous, continuous, continuous. Continuous assessment, delivery, integration and testing, release operations. So if you think of DevOps, um, you know, it's sort of a pie in the sky term. Um, today what we're gonna do though is we're gonna focus on one sliver of that DevOps story. And we're gonna focus on, you know, how you can take an incremental step as an organization. It's not about an all or nothing type of thing. It's more or less, you know, achieving DevOps or achieving speed and velocity in your operations and bringing ops into the equation, bringing dev and ops together, it's really about just taking small incremental steps, sort of like building a house. You know, you start with the foundation and then you move to the frame and you can't jump ahead unless you get a few sequential things done first and foremost. So the sequential area that we're going to focus on today is really how do you take your hybrid organization? Because a lot of teams, a lot of organizations, you know, they are heavily ingrained in waterfall-based methodologies. And they're using Quality Center effectively, or they're using ALM. And their program management office is very used to using ALM. That's how they report. And you're, you might be using PPM as well with ALM. And your business analysts are used to going into the requirements management module of ALM and uh, conducting their change impact analysis in there and modifying your requirements. Well, guess what? Now you have teams that are spinning up across your global organization that want to practice Scrum. You got certified Scrum masters in your organization that are saying, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of this waterfall approach. I want, to, I want to move faster. I want to deliver these products faster. I know that we can do better. And they're raising the bar and they're pushing the envelope. And they're coming to you with tools such as Agile Manager and saying, let's, let's give this tool a shot. Let's, let's try this product out. Let's see if we can't <clears throat> restructure how our team delivers and how our team does, does software, builds software. And the focus today is really on how can we take these two tools, Agile Manager and ALM, how can we bridge them together so that your team can practice hybrid Agile? You might not be fully agile, but you are, and maybe you're hybrid agile. So how can you take, how can you take the feature set and functionality of AGM and make it and use it to your advantage within the organization, within your organization? <clears throat> we're not going to actually go into the feature set of agile managers. We're just going to talk. We're going to talk about a sliver. Um, future tech talks might get into more specifics around the integration points, but we're just going to we're going to show you an unbaked script of how to integrate these two products together. So if you look here under third parties as well, this swim lane, HP allows you to integrate with a multitude of different systems. 
I spoke before about the IDE integration, the IDE integration with Eclipse from Agile Manager. Also, through ALI, Application Lifecycle Intelligence, you can integrate with TFS, you can integrate with Subversion, um, and a, a number of other products here as well to help facilitate the continuous integration and testing that is needed to realize the true, the true picture of DevOps. And then here under process, you can see, you know, if you've worked in the IT industry for any number of years, you, this looks very familiar to you, moving left to right. <clears throat> Here we have under Dev and QA, Develop, Build, Deploy, and Test, and over here, Plan and Define. This is really going to be the focus of Agile Manager and ALM. So notice the tools that encompass this, this portion right here. ALM, AGM, comes over here, Application Lifecycle Intelligence, then ties together some of these other tools in here. So UFT here, Performance Center, that's all part of the ADM suite. And these other products here in gray, can tie into this overall technology matrix in this picture. <clears throat> so this slide here, what do we have? A continuous continuous testing, a relentless assault on project risk. One thing about these QA tech talks is they are unscripted, they are raw and unfiltered. We are here to just talk to you about our thoughts and feelings on where software development and delivery is going, where we see it heading. Um, one of the things that I've noticed in being involved in a, a number of startups and having developed software that's, you know, used nationwide by a number of, uh, I've been involved in the real estate space and I've helped develop uh, leading edge software there, is, you know, it's never ending, it's never, it's evolving, it's continuous. So that's the, that is the underpin or the, the common denominator is continuous. So if you look at this previous slide here, Continuous, 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 continuous. It's the same with all software today. We're evolving the software based on user feedback. Your, the feedback from your user community is your lifeblood. Whether that's the feedback from your internal stakeholders or the feedback from your customers in the field who are paying to use your software. If you're not listening to the voice of the customer, the feedback, you're, you're essentially biting the hand that feeds you by not listening. So listening to their feedback and taking into account their feedback is what's driving your revenue and is what is ultimately going to make you a, a better organization and uplift your brand in the marketplace. <clears throat> Our opinion, or my opinion particularly, on you know, the ideal agile pitcher is a relentless assault on project risk through continuous testing. And this is not something I coined personally. I think a product manager from HP had come up with this particular slogan, a relentless assault on project risk. What it is, is true. It's continuous. So you could say relentless is synonymous with continuous in my mind. It's constantly you're assaulting project risk. You're assaulting it at every corner through your quality assurance principles, through your continuous automated regression testing, through your continuous integration testing, everything. You're running regression testing continuously. But in order to do that, you need to have the pieces of the puzzle tied together from a people, process, and technology perspective. Okay, And we're going to focus on the tools today. There's no question about it. But I'm speaking to you a little bit about the process and the people as well involved in that. If you think about it, you're going to be integrating Agile Manager with ALM. <clears throat> so ALM might be used by your QA team. Perhaps you have an offshore QA team or perhaps you even have business analysts that serve as your QA team, but they're in different locations all over the U.S. And they're very well familiar with how to log into ALM and go to your test lab <clears throat> and how to, how to run a manual test case, right? Also, you might have an automation team based out of India or, or based out of Poland or China, for that matter, that helps with some of your regression testing, your continuous regression testing. So as the pace of delivery in, increases and as you're moving software faster and faster because you want to get feedback as quick as you can on that functionality that you're moving out to your market or you're moving out to your stakeholders or end users you want to understand is that is this functionality that we've built useful is it useful to our stakeholders to our end customers because if it's not we want to fail fast 
And there's nothing sweeter than failing fast because you know instantly that, hey, what we just did is not going to work. We need to come back. We need to pivot. We need to move in this direction, move left, move right, move forward, move back, whatever we need to do to satisfy our stakeholders because those are the voice. That's the voice of the customer. But at the same time, you have to balance satis satisfying their instant gratification and getting their feedback with the risk that you're injecting into the process by moving as fast as you can. Sort of analogous to a sprinter versus a long distance runner. In my mind, I mean, I, I haven't, you know, I'm just, this is, I'm speaking off cuff here, but I would venture to say that sprinting 350 yards or 400 yards one lap around a track is much more risky on your bodily functions you know, you're more apt to pull a calf muscle or a quadriceps sprinting full speed than you are jogging or walking, okay? So as the speed increases, so does the risk. So how do we mitigate that risk as we're continually under pressure to move faster and faster? And really, in our minds, mitigating that risk is about understanding how you can harmonious, harmoniously integrate these products and conduct automated regression testing on an ongoing, even nightly basis over the environments that are changing. But you also have to have integration points with tools that your teams are using. I talked about IDEs and the integration with your developers' IDEs. <laughs> the data needs to be in a common viewpoint because stakeholders and Managers and executives, they need to make decisions. In order for them to make decisions, they need to see the data rolled up into a summary view. And the only way you're going to get it into a summary view is if you have the touch points and you have the products kind of integrated together. So I'll get off my high horse. That's what I wanted to say about our continuous uh, assault on project risk. This slide here is, okay, so we're getting past all that stuff. Matt's off his high horse. Let's talk about how this QA talk can benefit you. Our QA talk is really geared towards showing you an unbaked, unscripted way, installing the integration bridge and getting it working between Agile Manager on SaaS, so HP hosts it, and ALM hosted by the Results Positive Data Center. So we're going to show you how to get it up and running quickly. And our focus, once again, we're going to create one synchronization link or one synchronization point around the integration of either defects, requirements, or releases. I haven't decided yet because this is unscripted, and we're going to do it on the fly as soon as I get into it. So let's talk about the key strengths of this next-gen synchronizer between ALM and Agile Manager. Synchronization is near real-time. It's not real-time. It's not, you know, it's every 30 seconds. Close enough, right? Reduces the potential number of conflicts. You can install the integration bridge on any operating system, uh, Windows or Linux. Setup and configuration is quick and easy. There's a step-by-step -step wizard. There's auto mapping of fields. There's simulated runs. You can monitor it, <clears throat> make sure there's no conflicts. And maintenance up and upgrades are pretty simple as well. Okay. This next slide here is shared visibility into coverage status. Okay. So let's talk about this. Agile manager versus ALM or quality center. When you create your user stories in Agile Manager and they synchronize over into ALM, as you know, if you're using ALM, say you're a test manager or quality director, you're probably very aware of the direct cover status field within ALM. That direct cover status field, does it not give you visibility into the execution status of the tests that are traced to it? So that gives you a viewpoint of, did we test this requirement? Are we good to go? Do I give a thumbs up in that, that next go no go meeting or do I not you know it gives you visibility into where you're at <clears throat> well your product owner and your scrum masters want that visibility as well the integration that we're gonna show you today takes that status and feeds it back over into the user story with an agile manager so it gives your product owners and scrum masters a viewpoint as they're managing the sprint cycle of whether this has been tested whether your QA team has done their diligence in running over this functionality and also <clears throat> regressing over existing functionality that might be tied to this new functionality. In synchronization rules, uh, quick and easy here, you have the ability to set up synchronization rules between the two products. 
You also have the ability to specify, you know, the system of record, um, whether that's Agile Manager or ALM. And as I kind of spoke about before, you have out-of-the-box field mapping as well. <clears throat> HP has said, okay, we understand the schema of both of these products. And since we understand the schema, we're going to go ahead and give you some out-of-the-box field mapping, save you some time, put it together quickly for you, help you piece the puzzle together. So let's get into the demo, and uh, we'll try to make this quick and easy, and we'll show you how this works. So what I did is I spun up a virtual machine internally here at Results Positive. Um, well, I want to tell you, you probably you can use your workstation. So if you're you know if you're watching this from your from your desktop or your laptop, and you want to use your laptop as the server, so to speak, to install the integration bridge, you can certainly do that. I wouldn't recommend it, um, but you can certainly do it. Uh, that's up to you. Uh, what we would recommend is spinning up a virtual machine. In that virtual machine, you can use to go ahead and install the bridge, and that's what we did. So, I'm on the virtual machine right now, and I've brought up Mozilla Firefox, and I'm log. I'm going to go ahead and log into Agile Manager here. So I clicked here. I'm logging into Agile Manager. It's going to load up. There we go. Agile Manager, it is a sticky application, so where I logged out last time, it's going to bring me right back into there. Let me actually come out of this viewpoint and show you, because if you're new to Agile Manager, you're not going to, you're not going to be sure where to go. So if you're new to Agile Manager and you sign up for the product the first time, you're actually going to be brought into probably the dashboard. Um, one of the things you're going to want to make sure of, and we're not going to give you an overview of the product here, but I want to show you a few things. You're going to create, so you create a, um, a free trial to Agile Manager. You want to come in here, click on this gear icon, and then come up to here under Site, and go to Users, and then go to your name. Click on your name, check it here, and then go to, click on Assign to Roles, and just make sure that you have the Integration Administrator checked and also the integration bridge checked. If you don't have those checked, you're not going to be able to see this tab, the synchronizer tab. And that's what we want you to see today, integrations, synchronizer. All right, so now that we're here, what do we do next? So I'm gonna go to more actions, <clears throat> and I see this, download integration bridge. I'm gonna click it. And since I have a Windows virtual machine, I'm going to click Windows. Uh, what HPE, what Agile Manager is doing is it's generating the files. There we go. I'm going to save the file. And I do apologize for those uh, listening. It's um, allergy season here in South Florida, and uh, that's where I'm recording this from. And I've been having some trouble with my <clears throat> with my voice this morning, so I'm trying to keep it under bay. But I apologize if I'm continuously clearing my throat. And we will let this download, and I'll unzip it and install it directly on the virtual machine, and we'll show you how this works. Meanwhile, while that downloads, what I've done over here is this is our internal instance of Application Lifecycle Management version 12.5. I went ahead and I created a domain for this demo and a project that we're going to link Agile Manager to. So let me log out of here, and I will actually log back in real quick, and we'll go to Demos, and this is the one here. 
So let's take a look to see the progress. Oops. All right, still downloading. It's a big zip file. I guess it's not that large. Okay, um, it's been it's completed downloading. <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run the executable and basically extract everything. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a new folder on my desktop. I'll call it temp. Simple enough. And I'm going to extract everything into that temp folder. Okay, I've done that. Now I'm going to run this as administrator. So this executable here, hp-integration-bridge, it's an executable file. Run it as an administrator. Again, this is unscripted. Uh, we just want to give you a viewpoint into the steps that you're going to take to go ahead and deploy this um, integration bridge on your virtual machine. Hopefully it shows you, uh, provides you a little bit of confidence in terms of go ahead, going ahead and doing this. Um, I know it might seem a little bit overwhelming in how to do this, but we want to show you how, how the process works. So that's the default directory, integration bridge. And I'll give the bridge a name. <clears throat> so notice how these are pre-populated. This URL is actually the URL to Agile Manager on SAS, HP host. It takes, this is unique identifier as well. So this uh, identifier here is actually what was automatically generated um, automatically generated when you created your trial instance of Agile Manager. I'll give it a bridge name. I'll call it um, HGM underscore ALM bridge. And this has slightly changed from before, uh, client ID and client secret. Um, I'm going to try my username and password. Um, that's what it asked for before. I think it's actually different now. Let me try. Invalid client ID and client secret. So let's do this. Let's go back into Agile Manager. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new client ID and client secret. In the past, the integration bridge would ask for your username and password to set up the int bridge. The advantage of, or the disadvantage of that really is when your password expires, your integration bridge is going to fail. So it's not connected to Agile Manager. So um, HP went ahead and, 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 you know, built out OAuth authentication. That's what I'm setting up here. So to do that, you'd go to API under integrations and you'd click add new. And you can select here, um, integration bridge. And I'll call this, um, you know, ALM underscore AGM. You can name it whatever you'd like. There we go. So that's going to be our client ID, and that's going to be our, our client secret. So I'll go ahead and throw this into a notepad, and then you'll want to save this information off yourself as well. Secret. So basically that just generated a key for, for my instance here. Okay, let's go back over here, 
and I'll jump back into my virtual machine. Refresh this. Make sure. Okay, there it is. There it is. Okay, good. So let's go back over here. And this is, we're back to the installation of the integration bridge. So client ID, let me go ahead and take this that was generated. <clears throat> Plug that there. And this is the client secret. I'll move that over here as well. And let me retest the connection. And voila, it succeeded. Perfect. So let's move to the next step. And port, that's the, the port of your integration bridge. Keep that as default. Next. Basically, it's a pre-installation summary page. It's showing you where it's going to be installed. Okay. Install. And we'll give it a few moments here. It'll actually go ahead and install it. Now, the bridge is just one step. That's what, that's sort of like, you know, it's just, it's it's the conduit between Agile Manager and ALM. You might run into a port issue if you have ALM sort of locked down to the outside world. Um, if you do, you might you might have to talk to your security team to open a port uh, for, for integration for this bridge to speak to ALM. We don't have that in our instance of ALM. Um, it's publicly accessible, so I didn't I didn't have to go through that process. Okay, so endpoint credentials manager. This little screen will show up here. And let me create a new endpoint. I'll call it ALM. And basically, what I'm doing here is I'm going to specify my username and password for for logging into ALM. So what I use to log in here is what I'm going to specify over here. You might actually want to create a designated username and password that's specific for this bridge as it as it as it as it logs into ALM. Keep in mind, you don't have to designate a username and password to connect to Agile Manager, but you have to you have to designate one to connect to ALM. So I'm going to save that credentials were saved successfully. Okay, I'm going to minimize there. Notice what just occurred. I installed the bridge, and this showed up green green check light, meaning all systems are go, it's set up. Now, what I'm going to do for the sake of this QA Tech Talk is I'm going to show you guys how to add a link. So I'm going to add a link here, and notice these tool tips that come up that kind of guide you along. So here is manage endpoint credentials using the endpoint credentials manager. This is what we just installed, right? So credentials display name ALM. Click here to retrieve ALM projects. So let me scroll down a little bit. Click authenticate. Okay. So here is you want to put the URL to your to your ALM or QC. So I'll go back over here and I'll grab this. That's my URL. Copy that. Come back over here. Enter that endpoint display name. <clears throat> Let's call it ALM version 12, 12.5, <clears throat> and authenticate. Okay, let's see. Okay, 216 QC bin. Let me remove that. Okay, so important note here, <clears throat> delete everything after QC bin, okay, so leave it just like that, I'll click authenticate again, notice how it authenticates, and then it gives you a viewpoint into the domains, so let me go here, I'll connect to this project. What I'm going to do up here is let's go ahead and synchronize requirements, and I'll just call this requirements demo. So basically, I'm going to be synchronizing user stories that are created in Agile Manager and sending that data over into ALM. 
And then there's a number of different workspaces that I have set up here in this instance of Agile Manager. And I'll go ahead and select uh, just the default workspace. There we go. Check connectivity and continue. Basically, it's confirming connectivity between the two products now. And this is the easy to use wizard that um, we talked about before. So over here you say map your requirements and define where you want to manage them. So in Agile Manager you have three different levels really. You have the user story, you have features and themes. And what you can do over here is you can say okay, if you're familiar with, if you're a test manager or QA director, you're probably familiar with requirement types. And these are set up within customization and quality center and ALM. So basically you can say okay, I want a user story in Agile Manager <clears throat> to be associated to a functional requirement in ALM. I want a feature to be associated with perhaps a group, and I want a theme to be associated with, and you can actually create a custom requirement if you wanted to in ALM or Quality Center and associate that, or you can create a custom requirement type and associate that with a theme. But what I could do here is I could say maybe maybe you don't want a feature with that. Maybe you want a feature with <clears throat> a business a business requirement, and then you want a theme with a group. So the theme is a group, and you can manage these all in Agile Manager, or you could set it up where you create and delete user stories in ALM and they feed over into Agile Manager. I'll keep it as Agile Manager for the sake of this demo. Click next. And if you had favorites created, you can select them here. I don't have any. Click next. Okay, great. You are about to create a requirement synchronization link. Now, remember how I talked about in the presentation that there's some out-of-the-box field mappings that HP takes care of on our behalf? So that's what's going to happen here. Okay. So HP is going to look at the schema between Agile Manager and ALM and automatically link up some of the fields that make, make the best sense. Okay. So notice this is going to be red until we go ahead and run an integrity check. No active runs. It's going to be red at first. I'll go ahead and X out on that. Let's take a quick look here. Basically, this is all the data that we just ran through. Notice no run history. And we can go ahead and run an integrity check. And that's right here. And basically, all I did is I right-clicked on it. So click Run Integrity Check. Basically, here is another pop-up that says View the integrate, uh, Integrity Check Log. <clears throat> so it's pulling pulling the schema, running it, making sure it's good to go. It passed green. Green is always good. And I'm going to go ahead and X that. And you can expand that to see the details here as well. So if you ever need to see the details or troubleshoot, you can go ahead and do that. Basically, it pulls up another tab. When you click on View Report or View Log, so this is a report. See? Notice what it did is it the integrity check kind of looked at everything. Remember when I talked about the out-of-the-box field mappings? These were the mapping checks that I went through. All right. I'm going to close that. So let's take a look at the field mappings. And like I said, HP does a really fantastic job of giving you tool tips along the way to sort of guide you along after you deploy this integration bridge. And what you can see here is how Agile Manager, the fields in AGM for a user story, map over to the fields within ALM. And down here, you can see, scrolling down a little bit, you know, total items, 32 fields, 13 maps, 19 unmapped, one warning. <clears throat> so you can look at the mapped ones. You just click there and it filters out on the mapped ones. You can go back to total items or you can click on the unmapped ones. All right. So this is series four, like I said, of our QA Tech Talk 
Um, I'm going to leave you with that today. So feel free to go ahead and get started. Um, point your browser to sas.hpe.com. Go ahead and download or sign up for a free trial. Download that integration bridge onto a virtual machine and get started. In series five, we're actually going to go into more details around how to set up some custom integration and some custom mappings between ALM and Agile Manager and show you how it works in a real world situation. We thank you again for taking the time to watch our QA Tech Talk today. We hope this was of value to you. Um, if you need any more information or would like to set up a free complimentary session, we'd be happy to help. We have a team of application delivery management consultants and architects. Um, distributed across the United States that could uh, help you out, help your team out, maybe even come on site to your organization and um, sit with you and help understand your business pain points and provide some unique solutions to them. Uh, thank you again. Point your browser to www.resultspositive.com and reach out to us at any time. Thanks again and we hope you have a great day.